Hello everyone, I'm Joseph Muli, the voice of Sa Ifadi Africa Organization. Today I want to briefly help the community all understand the difference between a sand dam and a subsurface dam. To start with, we, we can be guided by several key aspects or factors so that we may get uh, the clear picture of a sand dam and uh, subsurface dam. For a sand dam, it's usually a hydraulic water harvesting structure which is being built on a bedrock above the surface of the ground. And for the subsurface dam, it is usually, it, it, has, as, it has similar construction criteria. It, still it is built on um, bedrock, but it is underground, underneath the sand. It starts on the bedrock foundation and uh, it is completed or finished before it appears on the ground. Secondly, we can talk of the gradient. The gradient of the topographical gradient for the sand dams have been uh, usually constructed where the topographical gradient is high. When we mean uh, when we talk of being high, is where the runoff, the storm water, or the river flow, the, it has high ver velocity. But unlike for the subsurface dam, the the gradient has to be low. Why, why it should, for the reason is to allow water to seep in because subsurface dam, as we said, is the underground or ground dam, to be very clear. The other thing we can talk of the design criteria. For the sand dam, it is usually built, it is usually have the embankment wall, it is usually have the spillway and the wing walls. And also the river bags have to be of more than of 1.5 meters high for sand dam to be, for the site to be said to be potential for the sand dam. But for the subsurface dam, it, it does not have the embankments. No, it has the embankment, but it don't have the spillway or the wing walls. The reason is why we say subsurface dam, it starts on a bedrock, um, but ends before the, it reaches on the ground surface. For many cases, subsurface dam is very difficult to see physically, unless you get a shovel and you scoop underneath the sand so that you may see the embankment of the subsurface dam. The other thing we can talk of the storage capacity. For the subsurface dam usually enhances the ground floor or the ground aquifer. But for the sand dam, it usually creates its own storage capacity as per the catchment of the area. So that means sand dam has a bigger volume, can store giant volumes or gallons of water unlike to the subsurface dam. The other thing, we can talk of the site suitability. To what aspect should we look to say this area can qualify is potential for subsurface dam but is not sand dam. For the sand dam, the, as we said, the, the factors we have to look in one includes the river banks, they should be of bedrock or be of be very firm. Secondly, we have to look for the ferocity flow. Thirdly, we have to look for the strength of the river. For the rivers, they, we usually have three categories. We have the early stage, middle stage, and the late stage of the river. The early stage is for is like the source where the river starts and for the 
on the site suitability for the subsurface dam is very is usually very sometimes is very confusing and uh, in most cases it's difficult to identify and say this is a good site without getting knowledge from the community from the residents who have been there for the suitability site of the subsurface dam we have to look at the one there are a few aspects we have to look to identify one is the bedrock crossing that is to know whether there is a at any section of the river to know whether there is a bedrock crossing of which you can't see it because of the volumes of the sand since the service dam is usually constructed where there is already uh, volumes of sand and there is the ground floor aquifer you have to rely with the community to tell you yes here with there is usually a bedrock crossing at at either depth of 0 0.5 meters or 1 meter the other thing for the site criteria selection of site for the subsurface dam we have to look at the some trees there are those trees of which they usually help or they usually show indicate high potentials of water table we have like the fig tree that is a one of the species tree species which indicates high volumes of water in an area the other number three is where in any section of a river after it rains and the water flows and the river dries up there are those sections of the river where you will see water water moisture or water content is very high that means underneath the sand there is the impermeable rock which cannot allow water to penetrate or to seep through thus after it obstruct the water the water will rise up like the in the science we have the capillary action the water will rise up indicating that there is the water has been obstructed from continu continuous infiltration that means that sand is that sand gravel is highly saturated the other thing the other difference of the sand dam and the subsurface it also depends on size for the sand dam can be constructed even to a height of 4 meters 2.5 meters meaning 1 meter and above but for the subsurface dam they are usually limited on the size on the, the height the subsurface dam can only be of between the range of 0 0.5 meter to 1 meter of high and the area should be of giant volumes of sand the other thing we can talk of the technical aspect when we talk of the technical aspect we are talking of the the forces the forces acted upon the embankment the subsurface dam they are very simple in the design simple in maintenance and also ship to construct and thus we can say they are easily re replicable they can easily be copied from one community to another one to other one for the sand dam the embankment has to be designed to be to be able to counteract the sliding forces the overturning forces the reason is the horizontal flow of the water during the peak when we talk of the peak is during when, when the river is full after the rains when the water volumes rises high the, for the sand dam wall because it it is protruding above the ground it has to be strong enough to act upon those horizontal forces 
so that it may not topple or collapse. So to ensure sustainability of the sand dam, design aspects in technical, they have to be considered. That is the sand dam to be safe against overturning and sliding. Thank you, my members. Let's meet again, if God wishes. Thank you.